Hello everyone, I am Dheeraj and welcome to the lecture 4 of this course on diffusion models. Today we will be looking at score based modeling. Uh, you might find this to be a slight deviation uh, from the set of topics which we have been looking at. However, we, later we will see that the score based modeling also connects back to the idea of diffusion models. Additionally, we will later also see that there is a theory of stochastic differential equations and then we will see how score based models, stochastic differential equations and, uh, and diffusion models, all three of them get connected together. So later we will see that in today's class we will look at simply the, uh, the, the basic and the simple ideas of score based modeling and uh, let's, so let us get started. Okay, so, so to begin with. Let's look at you know the sort of problem which we have been looking at so far. Uh, let's take a relook at that, and that's the problem of generative modeling. So let's recall what is generative modeling. So what we have is that given set of samples. Okay, so x1 up to xm, so xi i from 1 to m coming from a distribution. Xi sampled from the distribution Pxx. So learn a parameterized representation Px theta to approximate Pxx. Now, when I say learning a representation, it can have two meanings. Okay. So either it could be you know some some sort of an expression to given an x, I should be able to recover px theta. Okay, or the second meaning could be that get samples from px theta efficiently. And most of the algorithms actually uh, try to enable us to get these samples. So let's uh, take a relook at some of the basic algorithms for this. So we have already looked at variational autoencoders and diffusion models, but okay, let let's take a look at you know the class or the family of algorithms which you know uh, do this sort of modeling for us. So so what are the algorithms? So. So there is one family of algorithms which is based on the idea of transformation of random variables. So basically here, okay, so one is of course this GANs for example, so GANs everyone knows. So here what you have is that you have some random variable which might be coming from a fixed distribution and then you have some sort of a transformation which is applied to it. And you know we we then you know use this transformed random variables as you know as, as, as samples from our uh, the our desired distribution. Right? So basically, I might be getting this value y, and GANs actually perform an adversarial training. So here, this is our generator network, but additionally, we also have a discriminator network which might be having its own set of parameters, say phi, and it can take one of the generated samples or it can take you know one of the um, one of the samples from my data, right? And it needs to, you know, output either a zero or a one depending on which of which of the samples it, it is, right? So basically, it's either outputting zero one or we can think of it, it it's outputting the probability that that the sample is true. So given the sample, right? So that sample could either be coming from my uh, true distribution Pxx or it could be coming from my uh, coming as a as this coming from this generator network, which essentially is performing a transformation of random variables. So note that here we are never performing an explicit uh, sort of uh, density distribution. We are not trying to you know estimate this density explicitly. What we are doing it is that we we are basically taking this random variable set and we are performing a transformation of random variables. So another approach which also performs this sort of transformation of random variables is this idea of normalizing flows. So what normalizing flows do is that again you start from some 
you know some some random variable which might be coming from a fixed distribution and then you apply a sequence of transformations say h1 that gives you some value z1 you apply another transformation h2 theta2 which gives you z2 and so on until you know you get the final transformation hk theta k and you get zk and essentially the idea is that the density of this matrix uh, uh, the density of this random variable zk you can approximate it using the idea of this uh, transformation of random variable so basically if you have a random variable x and you apply you know some transformation f to it to get y then essentially the pdf of y is going to be pdf of, of x times the jacobian of del x by del y so this is assuming that this transformation is invertible and it's monotonic right so there have to be you know some sort of conditions on this transformation for which this relation holds true and uh, normalizing flows ensure that not only is this uh, not only are those conditions true but in fact you can uh, compute the density of this transformed random variable efficiently and if you can do that efficiently so basically you would need to be able to compute inverses efficiently and you will need to compute the jacobians efficiently and uh, these transformations are designed in such a way that you can do the above uh, quite efficiently and essentially you then try to maximize the log likelihood of your data so this is th these are the class of algorithms which are based on transformation of random variable there is a second class of algorithms which which for example are these vaes or diffusion models so these are the ones which we have looked at so essentially they have a uh, so basically what they do is that you essentially instead of you know modeling your distribution directly you model your distribution as a marginal over some uh, random variable coming from a prior okay so basically you marginalize out z and you so basically you can model the distribution pxz this joint distribution you model as pz times px given z this you can take to be some prior or fixed distribution and this you take to be a parameterized likelihood and if you marginalize out z you get the distribution of x and uh, we have seen that you know that variational autoencoders and even diffusion models they actually optimize the elbow or uh, evidence lower bound right so they optimize this sort of evidence lower bound and uh, it, it can be shown that the lower bound is tight and if, if, if the posterior you are considering is you know it's coming from a large enough family then your elbow is a tight bound and it will suffice to optimize your elbow so this was for the case of uh, these VAEs and diffusion models right so this is something uh, we have seen so far but now let's get back to you know our task again so what is actually missing is that right now it one of the natural things in order to you know estimate the density could have been you know to just have a network a neural network which is parameterized by some parameters theta and you know what if we can train it in such a way or we can define it in such a way that it takes an input x and it throws out you know the probability of x parameterized by theta so the question is that is this possible can we have a neural network to output the x theta given x so this is the question it can we actually directly define the distribution in this form so what do you think i would want you to you know pause the video maybe for a minute or so and think about it so i i presume you might have given it some thought and the answer is that if we try to do this directly there are some issues so what could be those issues so issues is that you know the the main issue is that so px theta needs to be a normalized probability distribution so what it means is that the value of px theta must be greater than or equal to 0 for all x and if i you know if if, if z is some continuous it's some continuous variable then if x is some continuous variable then integral 
overall x p x theta this must integrate out to 1. So this integration must also be 1 which which means that you know it should be a normalized sort of distribution and uh, yeah so, so this is actually one of the uh, sort of main issues right that it may not be non-negative and the integral may not be 1. So non-negativity is easy to resolve we can have some sort of a non-linearity at the end might be exponentiation it may be for example ReLU which ensures that you know or, or maybe sigmoid which ensures that you know that at the end the outputs are non-negative however this normalization condition is difficult to ensure so you might be thinking maybe we can do a softmax or something right but then see softmax happens if, if if you know you are producing that entire distribution at once but here the network is you know we are trying to design a network in such a way that it takes as input an x and outputs px theta so this is what we are trying to do okay so how do we now resolve this thing so first condition can be done but this normalization is essentially a bit difficult okay so one way to do it is as follows that instead of you know um, have our model directly produce px theta what we do is that let it produce you know some sort of logits for us and then we'll do the normalization ourselves so basically we have this sort of a network Okay, and then it takes an input an x, this is parameterized by theta and it outputs fx theta. And essentially we say that probability of x parameterized by theta is nothing but exponentiation of minus fx theta over sum over x exponential of minus fx theta. So the summation in the denominator is what I call as the partition function. So I write it as z theta. Okay, so my px theta is essentially exponential of minus fx theta over z theta. And essentially the network only needs to output fx theta, which may not be normalized or which may even, it, it may need to, it, it doesn't have to be non-negative either. Okay, so this looks that, it looks that we have resolved the problem, but then we have introduced another problem, right? Because how, to, how do I now compute this value in the denominator? How do I now compute the z theta? And uh, this is a big problem for us. So essentially, the idea is that, um, let's, let's take a sort of a log of this value and then see what we can do. Okay, so it looks that we have made the problem even more difficult, but there is some way to resolve it, which we'll just see now. So this is what we have right now. So if I take log of this value, right, I get minus fx theta minus log of z theta. Okay, looks good enough, at least we have separated out this as an additive term. But then how do I now, if I want to optimize with respect to theta, okay, so if I change theta, this log z theta will also change. Okay, so note that this z theta is a function of theta only, it doesn't depend on x because we have summed over all x's. So how do I get rid of it? Well, one thing is that it doesn't depend on x. So if I take its gradient with respect to x, okay, then essentially this will go off to zero. So what I have is that gradient over x log of px theta is just minus the gradient of x, fx theta. So essentially if I can have a neural network to model fx theta, what I can do is that I can take the gradient with respect to x and that will give me, you know, the gradient with respect to x of log px theta up to a sign. So it doesn't matter. Okay. So this is something which is, you know, which is possible for our model uh, to, to model computationally well. But now the question is that I don't have the ground truth value of these. So what do we do? So first let's see how do I now formulate my problem. So the problem formulation in score based modeling is as follows. So essentially, by the way, this gradient of x log px theta, so this is called as the score function. So I can write it as sx parameterized by theta, which I'm defining as gradient with respect to x of log px theta. Okay, so this sx theta is my score function. And essentially our problem now is to, you know, minimize with respect to theta, the gradient with respect to x of log px theta, basically the model's score value minus the true score values. 
okay this square now this is what i want to minimize basically i want this score uh, the score mod produced by our model to match the actual scores from my data okay and of course this x we are taking the expectation over p data x or p x x whatever so now it introduces another problem okay and the problem is that i don't even know this value this true ground truth value is something which i do not know so how do i perform this optimization and uh, that is the trick we are going to see now okay and uh, this trick was introduced in this paper by haya uh, verinin so this was a paper in gmlr 2005 So this is the paper estimation of non-normalized statistical models by score matching. So this is by Hyverinin. Hyverinin. Okay, I'll put a link to this paper in the description box. And now we'll look at the trick which this paper introduced. So essentially, let's look at that expectation again. It, it may look that, you know, that we are just going around the bush we are trying something and another problem appears but in the end we will see that everything resolves on its own so this gradient with respect to x of log px theta i'll, I'll just call it score function okay and this is the true the true score okay the true score from the data and this is the model score which is parameterized by theta so i need to take the expectation with respect to pxx okay the squared norm difference of this so first let's try to open up this squared norm difference. So the first term which I'm going to get is gradient with respect to x of log px x squared norm. The second term I'm going to get is the squared norm of sx theta. And then I have a dot product between them. Okay, so between this gradient and sx theta. So I have an inner product between them. Okay, so good. So now let's open up uh, this sort of expectation. So essentially we can use this linearity of expectation. So it will break up into, you know, some of these terms. So first term is gradient with respect to x log px x squared norm plus expectation of x from px x sx theta squared norm minus twice the expectation of x from pxx gradient with respect to x of log pxx and sx theta okay so this term if you see this does not have any dependence on my parameters at all so if i want to you know optimize with respect to my parameters this is just some constant right so i can throw this term away. I don't have to worry about this term at all. The second term is the squared norm of the scores produced by our model. And if I have some samples from my x, which are coming from this distribution pxx, I can just take a sample average of sx theta squared norm, and that will give me an unbiased estimator of this quantity expectation of squared norm of sx theta. The last term is what is difficult to compute, which is the expectation of this inner product. So in order to compute this last term, what we are going to do is that we are going to apply a trick which this paper has introduced. And it, it's essentially nothing but integration by parts. So you just need to review your high, high school calculus and our job is mostly done. Okay, so this is the second term which we know how to compute and this is the third term. So let's look at how to compute this third term. Okay, so there's a minus two constant multiplier but I'll, I'll 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 just look at you know how to compute the expectation expectation of the inner product between gradient of x log px x and 
a score function. So this is essentially the inner product between the true scores and the module scores. So let's write down the expectation as an integral over all x, p x x, get this sort of inner product. dnx okay so now let's evaluate this inner product okay so this inner product i can write it as sum of these entries del by del x i of log p x x times s x theta i okay and now what do you see now you have a derivative of log right so essentially it's integral over x p x x v and x okay so i can take the summation outside the integral and then what i have is 1 over p x x times del by del x i of p x x okay so this is the ith term of s x theta right because i'm taking a dot product so ith term i multiply with the ith term and i sum with the i And this pxx and pxx this gets cancelled okay so essentially what i have is that it's an integral over all x of del px by del xi times si x theta now does this ring a bell so what do you think we can do here so you might recall you know the use of integration by parts trick essentially in integration by parts what you do is that if you have an integrand or basically the expression integral inside the integral of the form u dash v you can write it as u v dash minus u times v dash right because essentially you are using the Leibniz rule that u v dash is u dash v minus u v dash so let's apply the trick here so essentially what we have is a sum over all i integral over x p x x d n x okay so p x x has already been cancelled fine so you have d n x and then you have this derivative times s s i x theta right so essentially you can write it as del by del x i of p x x times s i x theta minus p x x times del by del x i of s i x theta right so basically it's the derivative of the product minus pxx times the derivative of the other term right? and this is integrated over all x okay. now we can actually split the integral as you know sum of two parts the first part if you see it's just the integral of this derivative so essentially if you know you substitute the value of the limits so if you first integrate with respect to you know xi then essentially you will be substituting the value of uh, the xi at these limits and if you know your model is such that at xi equals plus infinity and minus infinity pxx goes to zero so if the data distribution is such that uh, the probability of you know any of the variables taking its you know value of you know plus infinity or minus infinity that tapers off to zero then essentially the integral of this term will just go off to zero so you will be left with minus sum over i integral over x t x x of del by del x i of s i x theta right and now the expression okay d n x sorry. so now the expression looks very familiar right because it's now again an expectation so it's minus sum over i expectation over x from p x x right and then del s i x theta by del x i and you can even take the summation back inside the expectation so it's minus expectation of x from p x x okay and sum over i del s i x theta by del x i right 
and si x theta if you recall that was the gradient of log px theta so essentially if i if i you know the if i you know take the um, derivative with respect to i terms and then sum over it's essentially summing okay so de del 2 xi by del xj of log px theta that is essentially those are the entries of my hessian and the diagonal entries are just going to be uh, del 2 uh, uh, del 2 by del xi square of log px theta which is what these entries are so these are essentially the diagonal entries of the hessian and if i sum over all these diagonal entries i am essentially producing the trace so it's essentially nothing but minus the expectation of uh, x from px x the trace of the hessian of log px theta and essentially in order to compute this expectation what i can do is that i can take in these samples the samples which i have and, and, and i can essentially compute this quantity and i take the sample average right? so this is essentially one of the approaches to score modeling which this paper introduced and in fact i think this was probably one of the first few papers in score modeling and maybe it introduced this sort of idea uh, so essentially looking back what we had was that we have the expectation of the squared norm of this difference. Uh, this expectation had three terms to it. One is the squared norm of gradient with respect to x log px x. The other term was the squared norm of sx theta squared. And then we had an inner product term. The first term did not have any theta component. So if you want to optimize with respect to theta, we can just throw it away. The second term can be computed easily because it does not have any uh, true, true score values which we want. And the third term that has an inner product between the true score and our model scores value but since we don't have the true score values we apply this integration trick and note that after this integration we are only left with a hessian or basically a sum of derivatives of my uh, model score values right it doesn't have any true score values at all and this expectation is with, is with respect to the true probability distribution but i can compute this by you know sort of uh, taking a sample average of the values of xi which I already have. So you know everything just boils down to computation of you know sx square theta. So let, let's actually rewrite the expression what we want to optimize. So essentially we were trying to uh, sort of minimize with respect to theta of the squared norm of um, gradient with respect to x log px x minus uh, sx theta squared. And what I've shown is that up to a constant, this value is just uh, gradient. Okay, so basically the scored norm square. Of course, there's an expectation here. And then there is a minus twice of that inner product, but this minus sign will get cancelled. So plus twice the expectation of x coming from px x. And you can write him here sum over i right? del si by del xi x theta. Okay. So that is it, right? And and essentially we can compute both these expectations by taking a sample average. So this was the paper by Hayabere Nin. Uh, essentially after this actually there's another paper by uh, Vincent which essentially shows you know a different way of computing uh, these uh, sort of <coughs> uh, uh, which shows a different way of computing uh, the uh, this the squared norm values you know by essentially taking a sort of a noisy no, uh, by, by essentially taking a uh, noisy version of our model and based on that you know there have been recent works which essentially you know take it to another level by you know producing sort of noise at different scales and then it directly connects to our diffusion models and it also gives us a way to write our stochastic differential equation so so those all those things we'll be looking at in the subsequent lectures so for today's lecture this is the just the basics of this score modeling and higher in its paper okay thanks and goodbye for now and, and we will continue in the next lecture.